things. What we've got here are a pair of Riello MultiPlus 40 kVA UPSs running in parallel. They're wailing that they want servicing, they're complaining about their batteries and their end of life. I think they've been in service for about 14 years, so they're going to get swapped out. The bypass panels will remain the same as we swap in Riello for Riello, so the work can be carried out without shutting down the server room or the five other comms rooms these also feed. The new UPSs have arrived, but just waiting on the commissioning engineers will be swapping them out, and then I'll be able to take the old ones apart. This is one of a number of large UPS installations we have, several of which have featured on my YouTube channel as they've either been replaced, decommissioned, or in one case after a power module blew up. The new ones are in. Two engineers turned up at 8am, one more at half 8, and they're all done and dusted by half 10. Top job. These are 30 kVA units, a drop in size from the 40 kVA ones taken out, but those in turn were double the size of the silicons they replaced, and it shows how the server room requirements have changed over time as server requirements have increased, then decreased again as more services get pushed out to the cloud onto someone else's computer and someone else's UPS. At the moment the UPS is estimate 50 minutes of runtime based on the present load, but unless the site's going down for a fixed electrical testing, even 30 seconds would be enough as we've got the big generator as well. That means we've got two 40 kVA UPSs to dismantle. Here's the front of one. There are I.O. connections at the top, then the 100 amp battery fuses, which have all been removed, the input, maintenance bypass and output switches, and the terminal cover, which has been removed to expose the connection terminals. Those input and output switches look like MCBs, but they're actually switch disconnectors. They don't offer any overcurrent protection. The input is rated at 125 amps, the bypass and output are 100 amps apiece, and they've also got an auxiliary contact so the system knows the switch position. On the left is the connection panel for when you've got an external battery pack fitted. There's provision for diodes on the board, but instead we've got four P600K diodes wired into the bolt terminals instead. Those bolts go through to the rear of the board and carry the battery cables off inside. You can see that the board's also got provision for capacitors of a variety of sizes, but they're not fitted. Instead, there's some little ones on the back. With most of the components missing, it's not the most complex of schematics, with the terminal block at one end and the bolt terminals at the other. Next to that is the three-phase input and output board. The optional bypass input isn't fitted to this model. With that, a second supply can be brought in to run the output while the UPS is completely shut down and isolated, supply cable and all. In our case, the bypass for the individual UPS is done on the panel on the wall, and the UPS is a size so we can run on a single unit if need be, with the other unit completely disconnected, input and output, at the wall panel. That missing board section is handy now, though, as we can see how the other sections are wired without stripping off any components. Again, not a lot to see, just filter caps, surge protection, some discharge resistors to stop it biting. Additional phase-to-phase -phase and neutral-to-earth surge protection has been left out. Once again, the connections which head off into the bowels of the UPS are all bolted in at the rear of the board. And once again, the schematic's pretty simple. Round the back, we've got a parallel communications module which allows the UPSs to run in tandem. There's provision for another expansion card. Then below, we've got fans for the various modules inside. That parallel comms module doesn't have much on it. The main features are a bunch of optocouplers and an A82C250 CAN bus controller to deal with the communication between the UPSs. There are two internal connectors, one of which heads to the controller board and one to the AUX board, which we'll see later. With the side off, we can see one of the three power phase assembly modules. There are one per phase in this thing. There's also a filtering and measurement board, two other boards behind that, one to the side, plus 40 lead-acid batteries which make up half of the pack. Round the other side we have another 40 batteries and the other two power modules. What I've done here is pull one jumper out of each row of 10 batteries on both sides to break the pack up into the lower voltage blocks. Now the rest of the jumpers can be removed, followed by the batteries. Starting with the top row, as if you take the lower ones out first, the top ones will drop down and probably short out against their retaining bracket. And you don't want that. Many UPSs of this size are designed with user-replaceable batteries. This definitely isn't one of them, and the silicon it replaced definitely wasn't either. Removing the top lid exposes what appears to be the brains of the whole thing, with two boards sitting in the middle. The larger control board has numerous ribbons dropping down to the side boards in the rest of the machine. The photo hasn't picked it up clearly, but that's an Altera Max 2 in the middle. Not a CPU, but a CPLD, so this isn't actually the control board at all. The triplets of 8-pin chips to the sides are all FAN 3227 MOSFET gate drivers. The other 8-pin chips are LM393 dual comparators. 
The 14 pin chips are mostly a mix of LM324 quad op amps and LM339 quad comparators, although there's one TL084 quad op amp in there as well. It's basically lots of op amps and lots of comparators. The second of those controller boards is a clock battery, suggesting it's the real brains of the outfit, and indeed that's a Renesas 16 bit microcontroller sitting in the middle, with a TMS320 DSP nearby. Most of the other chips dotted around are just logic gates, but there's also a regulator, yet another op amp, because one board full isn't quite enough apparently, a 512 kilobit serial EE prom, and a PCF 8563T real time clock. This board also has connections running out to the front display panel, the front I.O. board, and the front and rear module slots. Not much to see on the Netman board, which is plugged into a slot on the front. This is a network interface card which provides a basic web interface for monitoring the UPS status, SNMP monitoring, and can also communicate with a computer running the Riello PowerShield 3 software, which can monitor multiple UPSs simultaneously. On the card there's not much to see, just a Dallas network microcontroller, two ADM202E RS232 drivers, a Cortina Ethernet transceiver, 4 megabits of SRAM, 8 megabits of flash, some voltage regulators and a triple five timer. We've already covered the parallel interface, so the last one on the top is a front panel I.O. card. That's got an emergency power off connection, which if broken will instantly shut down the UPS, so the connector for it is screwed into place. Next to that is an AS400 connector with inputs for turning the UPS on, off or on bypass, and relay contacts indicating whether it's on bypass, on battery, or if the battery is low. USB and RS-232 connections round off the front panel. Internally it's got power share relay contacts. These are used to shed some UPS loads when the battery is low to extend the remaining runtime for more critical systems. It's also got three ribbon connectors, many of which share pins. The main purpose of this board is to basically provide isolated connections to the outside world, either through relay contacts or through optocouplers. There are two separate sets of supply and ground rails inside, everything going to the front panel, being fed from a supply that's generated from a small isolating transformer on the board. Apart from the optocouplers, the other ICs on the board are a Max 232 dealing with the serial port and a Cypress microcontroller, and that just deals with USB. Before heading into the bowels of the machine, now would be a good time to check out the front panel. Removing the outer case reveals not very much at first, as a large LCD is covering most of the board. On the back there's not much more, just a 26 pin ribbon connector, a resistor and a preset to adjust the display contrast. Removing that LCD and flipping it over reveals it to be based on a Toshiba T6963 TFG, so this could be interfaced to a Raspberry Pi without too much trouble, if you wanted to. With that board out of the way, we can now see the circuitry on the board, and there also appears to be provision for a completely different LCD with LEDs and switches in a different arrangement. LEDs along the top and buttons in a big smiley face arrangement suggest that this is the same board that you'll find inside the Power Dialog Plus model. Probably not a popular UPS range here in Wales, certainly in South Wales, as nobody there will want a UPS that's pup. The schematic reveals there's not really much going on in here really. A serial to parallel shift register operates the LEDs and the buzzer via a transistor array. A parallel to serial shift register deals with the push buttons and two hex buffers link those and some of the LCD pins back to the rest of the system. And that's pretty much it really. On the right hand side of the UPS we can now better see the two power modules, each with three big chokes to the side, 296 and one 220 micro Henry, with one connecting to the board and the other two interconnecting with the other boards. Those power modules do the heavy lifting for this UPS and are each made up of several boards connected together as a set. Sitting on top of the heatsink is an input board containing fuses, relays, a current transformer and some optocouplers running on an isolated supply, connecting to a 6 pin connector heading off to the next board along. Another isolated supply feeds a double SCR module bolted to the side of the heatsink, which I assume is used when it's in bypass mode. Those SCRs are connected back to back, so the module can connect in both directions. Rated 119 amps and 1600 volts, beefy. Also bolted to the side of the heatsink is another circuit board. At first glance this may look like yet another filter board, but on the back are bolted a pair of combined SCR and diode modules. Looking at the schematic hints at what these might be used for. If you ignore the SCRs and just look at the four diodes in the circuit, you've got a bridge rectifier feeding the plus and minus connections from the line and neutral AC inputs, albeit with the P600K diodes only being rated at 6 amps. Switch the SCRs on and the plus and minus connections can draw power from the battery supply as well. That board feeds onwards to the big power board at the bottom. On here are six 80 amp IGBTs connected in sets of three, 
Four double 30 amp diodes of the green strip marks, with all four diodes of each pair connected together as a 120 amp set. Six big electrolytics that you definitely wouldn't want to bite off. And a daughter board containing a buck IGBT module rated at 600 volts and 150 amps. Four IGBTs in one big block. Four opto-isolated driver circuits feed that IGBT model, and two more deal with the other two sets of IGBTs. Two LEM current sensors on the front edge, marked LEM plus and LEM minus, monitor battery current on their way into the plus and minus terminals on the SCR board. They look like current transformers, but whereas current transformers can only measure AC current, these have Hall effect sensors built in so they can measure DC as well. The big connectors on the end, marked A and B, daisy chain DC and a few other signals from one power board to the next, plus to two other boards that we'll see shortly. The terminal on the end, marked red and black, is just for the fan. I could probably trace out the schematic on this, as though, though it's not the biggest board, it doesn't exactly look the most complex, but I'm not going to. On the left hand side we have the third power module, an output board, another two boards hidden behind that, and another module with its own smaller fan to the side. The board below the power module is referred to as the output inverter card by Riello, or at least by the spare parts suppliers, although it doesn't actually do any inverting. The three phases pass through this and it monitors voltage, AC and DC current through them. It's also got a set of 40 amp relays, two per phase, which are all switched in unison, a set of 80 amp fuses, and some more filter caps with thermistors attached, but not plugged into anything, not in this unit at least. If there's one thing this UPS isn't short of, it's filter caps. The whole thing passes its findings via a 40 pin ribbon cable back to the control board up the top. Lurking behind that are two more boards. One, and I think this is where I found it because there's no room anywhere else, is this input filter board, which is as simple as it looks. Three big caps sitting between each supply phase and neutral, with 25 amp fuses protecting them. The other board lurking behind is referred to as the AUX board or Alim AUX board, by the labelling on the control board on top, and by a label on the board itself. Given that it looks like some sort of souped up switch mode power supply, I expect that's what it is, providing various power rails for the other boards. For a switching supply, it's sure got a lot of linear regulators though. The fuse on this is only rated at 2 amps, so it's definitely not handling much compared to the rest of the system. The final board is what the fourth fan on the back is for. The board itself is labelled AR, the control board refers to it as CB. Some sort of supplementary battery charger perhaps? It's got a 5 pin output which connects to one of the 12 pin power board interconnects, as does the AUX board we looked at just now, but with 16 amp fuses this time. More big fat electrolytics, four small relays, two IGBTs, two diodes and another pair of opto-isolated driver circuits. Oh, and a connection at the end that goes to the batteries via a pair of small toroids. And that's it. I forgot to film it with the front panel off exposing the breaker connections, but that would be just a tangle of wires anyway. Corrections and comments welcome, of course, especially regarding that last board and what it's for. Thanks for watching.